everyone listening on the radio, watching on iHeartRadio.com. We got quite a show coming for you tonight. Nearly 15 years ago, can you believe that? 15 years ago, Linkin Park crashed into the rock scene with their unique mix of rock and hip hop and electronic. Oh, we like it all. They are the first rock band to achieve one billion YouTube hits. One billion, could you do that? I, I couldn't, I couldn't do that. Uh, they just released their sixth studio album, The Hunting Party. Now we're gonna hear a couple songs from The Hunting Party, but we're also gonna hear those Linkin Park songs that you know and love. Here's Chester, Mike, Rob, Brad, Dave, and Joe. Give it up for Linkin Park! very much check this out this is something for your people on the back of that gallon rocks you give you what you need like papa who's got ya uh separate the weak from the opposite lead to me got cream part on it busted and switch styles on the dime quick quitted y'all quick tripping i don't have the time for your crying i grind tough suck to make your mind up are you in the fire 
Pirate Squad or are you in the line up?
Thank you. Yeah, waiting for the end. My body's kind of squeezing me. It's Lincoln Park. We are at the iHeartRadio album release party for the hunting party. Now, you can download the album if you would like, or you can walk that cute little ass inside a store and go, hey, give me a Lincoln Park album. It's about that time. I need it. I'm Jen Marino. Your name is Ch 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 Chester? <laughs> I think so. All right, so we all know that this album's heavier. That's kind of been the uh, headline for this one, shall we say. Correct. Raw, edgy, dirty, need a Clorox wipe, wipe it off. Let's get rid of all the dirt. No, that's let's right. If, more. Uh, if, you don't like, um, if you don't like the heavy side of Linkin Park, then uh, uh, don't listen to this record. Oh. Um, oh. If you don't like shredding guitar solos, then uh, you shouldn't listen to this record. If you don't like kick-ass drums that make you want to punch things uh, all, over, all over town and in your house, uh, including yourself... Uh, then you shouldn't probably get this record. It's and, true, because um, Chester's actually punched me to this to this album. It's true, yeah. He's punched me right in the face. That's right. And um, and so, yeah, I think that this is definitely, I mean, without question, this is the heaviest Linkin Park record that we've made. Um, they wanted it. I mean, we, you can tell they wanted it. We wanted to kick ass from beginning to end on this record. Um, and that's what we did. And it was really inspiring. It was super fun to make. And... Uh, you know, one of the, I think one of the most fun songs that we've been playing um, off this record is Wastelands. We've been oh playing God. that. Can we hear it now, please? Can we hear it now? You guys want to hear that one right now? Oh, my gosh. All right, let's do it. All right, here's this was for you. It's Lincoln Park. to the 
iHeartRadio album release party for Linkin Park's The Hunting Party. Uh, I think that gave us a little bit of a taste of how hard that album every, is. Every time we do an album release party and they say album release party and hunting party, I feel like there's a better way to say it. Okay, so I'm going to need hunt you. Okay, album, so hunting, release, party. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Too many parties. Rewrite the, the Actually, disco. Actually, there's not enough parties. The there's disco. not enough party. There's not enough fucking parties. How about that? I think there's more party. I mean, like, album party, release party, the hunting party, today party. I like it. I like it. I'm going to have to write that down, though. It's going to take me some time. Was I not supposed to curse? I don't know. We're on the radio. Can you, can you curse? I hope they bleep it out. Um... So, do you guys, like, look the guys around? Who, people from Warner Brothers Records are here. You could send the bill to them. I'm sure they'll be fine with that. Hello? They're cool with that. <laughs> you guys uh, look around, listen around, walk around, noticing anybody coming up that could possibly carry the torch on after you, with you, next to you? Well, what do you well, guys think? Well, I, that was a total, that was like a, no, that was like I a, mean, here's you what set I, us up for that one. Here's what I, here's what I want to do. I want to, I want our music to inspire the next band that's going to do something crazy that's going to take all of us by surprise that's going to like ignite a whole group of people that would never have imagined going and hanging out in the same place or being in the same things to get together you know that's what we want to do with this record we want to make an album that's going to inspire people to go want to be in a band and make music and do something fun that has energy you know that's what we want to do with this one have you ever heard a story from somebody that's walked up to you and said, you've inspired me to... Yeah, actually, that's funny you say that. Well, first of all, that's one of the things that inspired this album. The Hunting Party was about kind of getting back to the things that made us want to play music in the first place. This kind of music is the kind of music that made me a music fan. I was, when I was a kid, I was learning to play piano. And at a certain point, I was like getting bored with that. And, and I, didn't, I didn't ever take like making music that seriously until right. I started to hear like... Groups like on the rap side from like NWA and 2 Life Crew to like bands like Nine Inch Nails and eventually bands like Refused and At The Drive-In and Helmet and these heavier bands, things that were edgy and made my parents, that my parents wouldn't let me listen to. Right. <laughs> um, and that's what we kind of got back to. But there was actually, speaking of what you said, uh, are there bands that like um, kind of grew up on our music? Um, recently, we actually got a chance to hear from a couple of guys from different bands. One of them in particular we played with recently called um, Bring Me The Horizon. And those guys, nice. the kid Ollie, the singer, the yeah. singer from that band, his first concert ever was one of our first shows in the UK. And he, he was there. You can see him. There's a picture in a magazine of uh, Chester up against the front barricade. And Ollie is like four people back, like with his, you can see him. That's so awesome. It's great. And That's now he's really on cool. the main stage of like one of the biggest festivals in the rock festivals in the world. Right. So such a cool thing. Have you, have you ever taken a step back and really sat down and, and thought, this person, this band, you know, this group really did inspire me. Because I know that question gets asked a lot. And people are just like, you know, I love Elton John. I love, you know, whatever. But has there been anybody that's really uh, made you? Absolutely. To actually helped you develop who you Absolutely. are as an artist. Um, there's so many artists, uh, so many bands that for me in particular, you know, I was uh, admired for their talent. Um, you know, uh, Jane's Addiction. Um <laughs> Huge influence on me. I mean, the second I heard uh, uh, Ritual de la Habitual was the first record I heard of theirs. So I kind of was late to the game, but I was really young, you know. Um, when I heard it, I was just like, I didn't even know music could sound like that. You know? How young so were you? I was uh, probably a freshman in high school. Oh, okay. So, you know, I was, pretty, I was pretty young. So you recognized it, though. I, I knew right away the second I heard Jane Says, I was like, this is the greatest song of our time, you know. Uh, Radiohead is a band that I love. Um, they've always been a great band. Uh, you know, um, I liked bands like Knights of Reb and Front 242 and Skinny Puppy and Exploited, The Misfits, uh, NWA, you know, these were all, uh, Public Enemy, these were all groups that I felt like not only did they do things that were, uh, Rage Against the Machine, these were all bands that were doing things that were like, holy shit. Like, <laughs> yeah, if you ask that question, that's gonna happen, that's gonna happen. But I mean, that's like, it's all that stuff is so good and that was what made me want to be in a band, you know, um. And that's, you know, that's, that's something that, that doesn't happen all the time. Like, there's a lot of really great bands out there who write, a lot of, who write a lot of great songs, but there aren't that many bands that, like, become the soundtrack to your life. Right. You know, and, uh, and those, were, those were always the bands that influenced you the most. Would you say that they still play a part in, in your musical taste in your life? For sure. 
Yeah. I mean, you still keep up with them. You know yeah. how I mean, they well, could we even got a chance them. on this album. We even got a chance to work with some of these people that we grew up listening to. As you guys know, like the first song we released off of the hunting party was called Guilty All the Same. And we got a chance to work with Rakim, who I grew up just I, I mean, this guy was he was the he is one of the greatest of all time. And you can hear it in the song like there's even when I try like when we play that song, um, he doesn't he can't travel with us. I, I do his verse when we play it. Mm-hmm. And even learning it, it was like hard to do the verse because he's technically so skilled. Like, it's, it's a weird thing to say, but if I, I most people, like if I, I can sing along, rap along to a song and most songs I don't have any problem with, it's, it's like, it's, he's as easy as talking. But then there's something like this where it's clearly, he does something different and it's, it's really special. And so, yeah, like we, you know, um, that actually, we, 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 I'm looking at what, where, where uh, our set list here. Um, I don't know if there's anything you wanted to say about this next song we're going to get into. Are you doing Numb next? So that was an, ex- Numb is a chance, was a chance for us when we got to work with Jay-Z. And, and that's another example where Jay is somebody that like I grew up listening to and getting to work with him was really exceptional as well. I bet. I'm Jen Marino and you're listening to the iHeartRadio album release party for Linkin Park's The Hunting Party. It's available now online or in stores. And I think the songs on this album will take their place next to the other great great Lincoln Park songs just like this one here's Numb you guys gotta sing with us alright you know this part here yeah yeah can I get an encore? Do you want more? Cook it raw with the Brooklyn boys one last time I need y'all to work so what the hell are you waiting for? This will be no more, so for one last time, people make some noise. guys help us out with this. Difficulties. 
You guys help us out, okay? Thing. I don't know why, doesn't even matter how hard you try Keep that in mind, that design is trying to explain in due time Oh, I know Time is a valuable thing, watch it fly by as the pendulum swings Watch it count down to the end of the day, the clock ticks life away It's so hard, didn't look out below Watch the time go right out the window Trying to hold on, but didn't even know I wasted it all, so watch you go
Hyde Park's The Hunting Party. I'm Jen Marino, and we are live from the iHeart Theater in Los Angeles. Now, we're about to hear a couple more songs from their latest album, The Hunting Party. And uh, I know that you guys worked with Steve Aoki. I was wondering, are we ever going to get something else from that again? Or are you going to keep digging into that uh, hole because we kind of like it? <laughs> Steve Aoki hole. You know, we, we, when no, we we're just going to keep, uh, you know, just plunging uh, as far as we can in the Steve hole. As deep, <laughs> as far, as uncomfortably as possible. Yeah, right. No, I love it. We, um, we love Steve. Steve's great. Is that a yes? We love, I, I mean, the thing about the Steve's, the uh, light that never comes was that it came from just basically like, it came from just, um, honestly, I think I first reached out to him on Twitter. Oh, wow. I think that we just started talking. I hear that a lot he lately. Was following, he was following me and I was following him and we just started shooting direct messages and it was like, it was months before we even talked about, like, actually making music. It wasn't even like, hey, let's make a song. It was just talking. Is it easy to communicate um, with other artists on Twitter if you're an artist? Because, you know, if it's a, it's a fan thing, it takes, like, I'm waiting for tries. it to be like, hey, I, <laughs> I've met so-and-so. I've met um, Kesha because she was sending me dirty Snapchats. I'm waiting for that artist collaboration. Yeah. Like, not necessarily us, but it'll, oh be like, it'll be like Pitbull and Kesha were sending each other, like, pictures of their... Timbers. You know, pint, yeah. Yeah, and then it's like turns into a song. That's that's what that's gonna be. All right, I want to hear some more. Uh, let's do until it's gone. No. Yes. 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 You have to. Please, God, do it. <laughs> this is another one off the new album. Uh, oh, I need a
as requested. Yeah. Uh. Nah, you don't know me. Lightning above and a fire below me. You could not catch me, can I hold me? You could not stop, much less control me. When a rage of force, when the floodgates open, breaks your source, that pressure don't get. Breaks your door, say sorry, you take better, take some more.
release party for Lincoln Park's The Hunting Party. Hello. I'm going to go to the bathroom, so if you could just keep talking until I'm back. Okay, you, uh, I think we have about six minutes, unless you have to go number two. It'll take me six minutes to go to the bathroom, but probably like three. Okay, I'm going to need you to hurry a little. Are you taking the guitar that takes longer? I'm going to take the guitar, yeah, just to be safe. Okay. All right, so if he, he won't miss a cue or anything. Um, we were talking earlier about how, you know, obviously you guys worked with Jay-Z. <laughs> You've worked with a DJ. We'll get back to that in a minute, yeah, by the way. Yeah, here, I'll just oh, take over for Brad. Okay. Do you need to I already went. The... I just oh, went. okay, good. Yeah. Just now. Um, These are the nice things about, like, shows like this, because if it's a, one of our concerts, we can never take a bathroom break, but... For I just reason... wore what I call party pants. They're basically adult diapers. You just pee a little bit? Well, I mean, that way you don't have to leave the party. You can just kind of go. Nobody, it's really discreet. Unless you go too much and you get the bulge, which looks strange. But then that's kind of attractive, too, if you get, like, the bulge right there. Well, it depends, unless it goes backwards, it's, and then you have some the kind back of coming out of here. The back Nobody bulge. wants the yeah. tail. No. Yeah, no that, that's where it gets a little weird, and plus, poopy smells bad. So, 
That's okay. A, uh, Plus, we're still calling one, it poopy. This Can is, I? This is. I like have babies, so I call, I call it duty, poopy I mean, time. This is an all-time low Caca. for us, I think. I think so too. He's he's literally going to the bathroom while you're taking like <laughs> with his guitar. Just standing there. Really he's actually fun. not. He's just standing on the other side of that curtain. His guitar is actually his penis, which is really weird. No, that's not weird. He plays with it all the time, and that's why he's so good at it. <laughs> you can't do that. He's not here. He's not here. You can hear me. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> All right, so a real... No, but seriously. Were we going to talk a about real something? Question. No, 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 I yeah. have a question. What is your favorite brand of uh, Hold It All In diapers? Yeah, I knew we were going to get to something serious. Well, it something. depends. Yeah, no, I got to know it that It depends, first. really. Depends. You see what he did there? You guys get that? You guys working with me, huh? The ones in the front did. So what I did there. They're all with me. See what I did right there. So you... He's back. Oh, my God, that was so fast! That was fantastic, really. He's a professional. Girls have to wait in line. He's a professional. He's, he's a really, he's, he's a very stage. talented pianist. Okay, all right, this is getting weird. Uh, so you, you worked with Jay-Z, you work with, you know, all these other people. You do all of these different fast songs, slow song, rock song, a melody, a, a ballad, a, you know what? Yep. I feel a hundred different feelings when I listen to one of your records. How in the hell do you keep reinventing yourself and winning the way that you do? You know, thank you for saying that. Um, but that's for at least to me that's one of the first of all it's like it's one of the blessings of being in this band is that everybody is kind of um we can do that but everybody's also game for it you know ever since our third i think it was after our first two albums which were kind of similar to one another we decided let's open the door to doing a lot of different things and if you listen to our third album minutes of midnight every song is dra it's it's actually sequenced so that every song is drastically different from the last one and i believe that you crossed over more when it came to the third and the fourth record i mean i kind of found that you guys were in more formats than just like an active rock format or an alternative format you know we we early on i think you know if you listen to even hybrid theory meteora i mean if you listen to uh if you listen to like points of authority and then you listen to pushing me away it would Separately, you would almost like not think they were even the same band or how could they even work in the same record. But somehow we managed to pull them together. And that was like, you know, when we were out trying to like, you know, prove ourselves to the world and like, you know, we knew that our fans would come to the shows every night and we had them like, with, they had our backs. But, but you know, like, then we, then we go like, we'd get like a review of our, of our record and it would be, it would, we would feel like we had to come out. I would, in particular, would feel like I had to come like, prove like well we're not part of your thing like right we're gonna have to have our own section in the music music store just called lincoln park because you can't put us in one box in one box that's a good and, point and you can we can play with metallica and then we can play the next day with jay-z and like it doesn't matter like we still fit in both places and uh and so i think we like started to really wanted to back that up like we we wanted to show the world that we could do all these different things like we weren't just one thing and so we decided to take that as far as we could on from from minutes to midnight and on i think that i, I know this is the third time i brought it up now but i think that the album that you did with jay-z was one of the most genius decisions you've ever made it really Thanks, was Mike. Hey. it really they was because i've never heard anything really you know, like they, that they and came I got attached. to us with a they came we we were familiar with there was there was a mashup album called the gray album which was Jay-Z's Black Album with the, the Beatles' White Album. And right. that kind of kicked off this whole mashup thing. But what's funny about it is that, for me at least, and I think it was similar for all of us, that we, we all listened to like different genres of music growing up. But for me, when I first got into programming and keyboards and samples and stuff like that, that was the kind of music I was making, like, I don't know how many, six or seven years. I mean, that's what, what, literally what I grew up making, is that kind of like... This style, the collision course style. So you had it in you. So when they said when they sent it to me and they were and, and Jay's, Jay's manager like emailed us and said, Hey, they're thinking of doing like a song. And like it'll be a, like a show where it's like you and Jay, and then it'll be two other artists, and then there'll be two other artists. I sent them back like three songs and I said, like, can we just do the whole show? And they were like, Jay's email back was, Oh shit. <laughs> Which was great. I, dude, literally, like, here's the here's the thing. Hey, can we do a song together? And then Mike disappears, and he comes back, and he says, um, I took all of our songs, like all of our singles, all our biggest songs, I took all of Jay's biggest songs, and then I just like mashed, I, like, 
matched them up to the BPM, which is the beats incredible. per minute. And crazy enough, all the songs that were the closest together in terms of their BPM were also in the same key. And it was like they all we were like meant to just fall in place and and uh, that turned into the hour special that we did which it was perfect are you guys ready to hear more Lincoln Park? Crazy. yeah thank you i'm jen marino and you're listening to the iheart radio album release party for lincoln parks the hunting party it's available now online or in stores we got one song left so i want to thank chester mike rob brad dave and joe for a great show tonight guys let's take it home thank you. here's lincoln park Thank you guys so much for being with us this evening. This is a song that we, uh, speaking of Minutes to Midnight, stop that record. We've been ending the show with this one because we really enjoy taking it out this way with you guys. We can get those hands clapped together, put them up like this. And help me out. Yeah! Yeah, here we go for the hundred time Hand grenade pins in every line Throw them up and let's suck the shot Going out of my fucking mind Filthy loud, no excuse Find a new place to hang this loose Spring me up from the top of these roofs Not the types of why I won't get loose Truth is you can stop and stare Let myself out of no one care Drug the trips out of lay down there With a shovel left out of reach somewhere Yeah, someone forward in Making a dirt dance floor again Say your prayers and stop it out When they bring that chorus in I bleed it out, digging deep and just in the
was yesterday. Oh, God. What is that? Have you showered? No. Don't you live here? I never shower. It's bad luck. Oh, my God. I don't even know you anymore. Wait, I gotta say... I gotta say thank you. Thank you. Hey, what? Thank you. Pee pants. Pee pa- oh, thank you. Thank you for party pants? Is that what you said? That's exactly what I said. Thanks. Get some toilet paper. Thank you to you guys. You were awesome tonight. We appreciate all your enthusiasm. You guys are great. Thank you. Good luck on the album. Great success, I'm sure. It's fantastic. Do you guys love the new album? They love the new album. Oh, I gotta get him. Oh, God. He's trouble. All right. Here we go. Thank you. Thank you for letting me pee. Are you feeling better? I feel amazing. Okay. I got my eye on you. 